Today we begin with a glimpse into the near future and the cost of progress. For every advancement we make, whether it's automated assembly lines, robots that can serve meals, or artificial intelligence that can drive cars, there's a potential human cost in terms of jobs lost. Some believe a coming automation revolution could destroy more jobs than the Great Depression and the Great Recession combined. Their answer? A robot tax. That's today's cover story. He may be in the driver's the seat, green. but he's not driving. Make our turn. A computer is. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> God, something's spinning on your roof. I know, we can't get rid of it. This is a self-driving car. Okay, is it driving you right now? I'm doing, no I'm doing nothing. It's collecting data and driving. Uh, just wait, when the light changes, you'll see us pull out. I won't do anything. Right? No feet on the pedals, no turn signals. Look, look. Bye. <laughs> I'm in the back seat of one of Uber's new driverless test cars on the streets of Pittsburgh. Uber has mapped and computerized every speed bump and stop sign in the city, and live detectors on top of the car can detect a jaywalker or unexpected obstacle and react accordingly. So objects that are orange on your screen back there or reddish looking, uh -huh. they're objects that we could interact with. They're objects that are moving or could be moving. So bicyclists, pedestrians, other vehicles will show up there on orange. And then the blue objects are static objects like, you know, the edge of the road, the buildings, the trees, the telephone poles. It's not just passenger transport that's seriously becoming automated. For me, I think the most important things that computers are going to do in the next 10 years is drive trucks and cars. There are also robot toilets. Please, humans first. Robotic food service. And a robot named Yumi recently became the first to conduct an orchestra. La donna è mobile, qual più mal vento. An increasingly robotic future stimulates the imagination, but is also drawing concern. Will millions of human jobs disappear and thrust the U.S. and the world into an unemployment crisis? Well, I think the risk is that we have a, a workforce uh, or a potential workforce which is largely either unemployed or underemployed. Daniel Gersten is studying the issue for the nonprofit research group Rand Corporation. What will those people who were involved previously in manufacturing and industry be doing uh, to uh, have a livelihood and to feed families and, and uh, have their health care provided? I reprogrammed the robots to do the inspection. It's running much faster now. See? It's amazing, Molly. Ding, ding, ding. Thank you. One study had pointed to uh, within the next uh, handful of decades, uh, we will see uh, 1.2 billion people who were, would have been employed under this economy out of work, and that will equate to $14.6 trillion. Right now, if a human worker does you know, $50,000 worth of work in a factory, that income is taxed. Microsoft co-founder and billionaire Bill Gates recently ignited debate with his idea for a solution, a tax on companies that use robots to slow the speed of progress and pay to create new opportunities for the unemployed. You know, I don't think the robot companies are going to you know, be outraged that there might be a tax. I mean, uh, it's okay. One city at the center of the robotic revolution is Pittsburgh. Not only is Uber's robotic test car research based here, but it's also home to the famous Carnegie Mellon University. 1979, when the steel industry collapsed, Carnegie Mellon created the first program in robotics in the world. William Peduto is the mayor of Pittsburgh. By the mid-1980s, they had created the first PhD in robotics in the world, and in the 1980s defined artificial intelligence as, a, as an area now the city and its economy have caught up to that and it's become part of our industry. There are people, as you know, who advocate 
businesses that replace humans with robotics or robots or use automation rather than people should be taxed, a sort of robot tax. Yeah. What's your view of that? Well, you know, it's interesting. If you go back in history, that, that's something that was done in the past, right? Longshoremen uh, back in the day used to carry crates off of boats and all day long would be And then all of a sudden a crane came in and it had these massive containers that they were able to move. And what they did is created a tax on the crane operators that went back to the Longshoremen's Relief Fund. San Francisco official Jane Kim is leading an effort to push California into passing a robot tax, forcing companies to pay into a fund that could be used for education, retraining, and investments in new industries. If you look at much of the research, automation will further concentrate wealth amongst the few who own the robots and the algorithms and the automation. And so we want to make sure that there's a way to help distribute some of that wealth to help train and educate our workers for the jobs of tomorrow. But for all the support a robot tax may have, the idea has plenty of critics. Like Drew Greenblatt, who runs Marlin Steel in Baltimore. Bill Gates is a very smart person. However, on the robot tax, I think he's uh, going down the wrong path. Marlon Steele relies on automation and just 36 human employees. But he says without robots, he couldn't afford to be in business at all. The robot tax is a bad idea because it hurts the employees' welfare. The employees in America need the best technology possible to thrive and prosper. That's how we differentiate ourselves from the competition. We're not gonna beat them because we're cheaper uh, dollars per hour. We're not gonna beat them because our environmental protections are less. We're gonna beat them because our people are so much smarter and they have the best tools in the world. Others argue the job market will adjust without a tax intervention by humans. In fact, a study in the UK says over the last 15 years, 800,000 jobs there were lost to automation but nearly 3.5 million jobs were created by new technologies. Meantime, the future drives ever forward. Uber CEO says he hopes to begin short driverless taxi trips in Pittsburgh next year. At first, maybe just 5% of Uber rides. They're still working out the glitches, so... So with traffic like this, I always take over. For now, a human backup and sometimes a technician in the passenger seat are still in the cars. Pittsburgh's mayor told us that even if a robot tax isn't the ultimate answer, society will have to think long and hard about how best to deal with the inevitable disruptions of this next automation revolution.